get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have Mark C. Winters, co-author with Gino Wickman, the business bestseller, Rocket Fuel, the one essential combination that will get you more of what you want from your business. He's been a leader and entrepreneur for over 25 years and has worked with companies ranging from multi-billion dollar enterprises like Procter & Gamble and British Petroleum to raw startups originally drawn up on a napkin. I love the word raw startups. Mark, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Jeremy. Nice to be here. So Mark, I always ask, since it's Inspired Insider, what's been the lowest point in business for you and how you push through? So, uh, I mean... The, the lowest point I can remember that one when we when we shut down Cyber Explorer that was a uh, uh, you know that was a pretty low point um, and, and the thing that pushed me through that was really I was I was learning a lot so I was very optimistic and even though it felt like the the walls were crumbling down around me uh, I had I had gotten a tremendous amount from that experience and I just had this this feeling inside that uh you know that learning that knowledge was going to to help me uh you know do that next thing help me uh you know not make those same mistakes in the past but actually open up more doors more pathways more uh, opportunities for me to you know explore and, and and kind of build on in the future and so i think that that future view not the just kind of stuck in the now uh or or the looking back and thinking about what could have been but just look at all the nuggets I picked up, all the gold I yeah. picked up uh, in the process. Uh, I don't remember, uh, you know, getting the dark cloud uh, that mm. you know, I logically, rationally should have maybe had at that mm. point in time. So right after that happened, were you just right back thinking of what else you should do or did you need a little time? Yeah. So, so the way it happened, I mean, I literally was in operation mode, uh, for how to sell all that stuff. I mean, so we had the, the logistics of this big internet, uh, online auction. Yeah. And do you still uh, have we, pictures of the, yeah. of the space? Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. Uh, I want to yeah. post one on, on the bottom yeah, of this see, if you I'll have them. If, yeah. I'll see if I can find one. I'll see yeah. if I can find uh, somewhere there's videos somewhere there's videos of the uh, like vhs group. probably yeah it... probably i don't know if they're still they may have melted by now <laughs> but you know for, for the, the 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 news crew would come through and do an interview uh, mm. of me or whatever on site so there's some yeah. of that footage out there um but yeah so so you know i was busy uh i mean i was never uh, kind of stalled for something to do so i was busy in great how do we how do we wind this down and and uh, and go through that? And then I quickly, I mean, it was very very short time gap before I was in that uh, entrepreneur in residence role with Amico. So it's like almost immediately I really? went from you know when we landed that one mm-hmm. to boom I was on into the next thing, and it it was a nice blend for my transition because it kind of for my wife's benefit it had the security of right. okay he's got a job. But it had the uh, you know feed my entrepreneurial appetite uh, kind of nature too. So that's not yeah. a, that was a pretty rare uh, and special opportunity that I got to do that. Yeah. So on the flip side, what's been one of the proudest business moments? One of the proudest business moments. So um, there's been a lot of those. I you can say I, more than one if you want. Well, I'll, I'll tell you one of the the coolest ones was uh, you know that the the prediction analytics business when we sold that yeah uh so so the way that deal went down uh you know i told you it took a really long time to do it and uh it was supposed to close on a certain date and i had a vacation scheduled to take my kids to disney world on the on the other side of that date well it ends up dragging out big Mm. surprise takes longer and so we literally end up i'm at disney world trying to finalize this deal i'll never forget uh, the kids are on the dumbo ride going around and around and I'm, I've got my cell phone up to my ear, my finger in the other ear and I've been over a park bench trying to work out the final details on a, 
like a 401k plan transitioning because the hurricane came in and all the documents got blown away, something crazy like that. But it finally closed. And so uh, about halfway through the week, I'm sitting in the hotel room in bed uh, with my wife. I've got my laptop open and I see the money move into the account Mm. and I know it's done. And it's, 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 it's all done. All that work, all that build up, the creation of value, the finally closing the deal. And it happened. So everybody won mm. that was involved in that. The whole team won. And then I was able to just shut mm. the computer, turn off the phone, put that stuff all away. Didn't, you know, didn't answer the phone for, you know, for the rest of the time. So that felt really great. So how do you celebrate that once that happens? What do you do? Yeah, yeah. Well, the celebration there was with the was with the family, yeah. and then you know, we had another celebration when we got back to the to the town and and could be together with the team. Love that. Yeah. yeah, a lot of hard work, long nights. I'm sure. That's right. That's right. I mean, and some of the things that my team did, our team did, I mean, were just absolutely insane. Uh, you know, the coming back from you know what looked like the thing that would put us out of business countless times. Yeah. I mean, not countless, but you know, maybe six or seven times you'd think, wow. You know, that thing, that could kill us. And then they would figure out a way. The team would figure out some kind of, you know, way just kind of out of nowhere to, to navigate the maze. And, and we come out the other side and keep going. And, and those moments are really proud. Really so proud of how us. long of hours were you working at the time? Oh it seems like some crazy technology, even oh now, back then. Yeah. So uh, the, the crazy thing, Jeremy, is my fuel used to be diet coke and peanut m ms really oh yeah and so i literally would have in my desk drawer i'd have you know a bag of peanut m ms like a three pound bag i like those M&Ms. do you yeah <laughs> and, and i would be drinking i'd drink a 12 pack or more of diet coke a day wow holy yeah. cow i would be i would go for you know 24 48 hour runs i mean just stretches without sleep so i would just are you go, serious and, holy yeah. moly and, and so, you know, that's just sort of back then, and I'm not that way anymore by, you know, intent, uh, but I, I was kind of a sprinter, right? So I would go until I hit the wall, and boom, then I would crash, and I'd have to kind of recover and then come back, and I would just push and push and push and push and push. And I could do that over, you know, kind of a, uh, kind of a meta arc. And, uh, you know, that was just all kind of part of the startup, startup routine. Yeah. So now, you know, I don't do that. Now I don't. I don't pull all nighters now. I don't. I don't live on M and M's uh, and and Diet Coke. <laughs> thankfully, how'd you even survive on that? Yeah, it was crazy. You know, it was weird. I would lose weight too. You figure that one out. I I would I would drink Diet Coke and peanut M and M's by the pound and lose weight in the process. Maybe it's I a new diet. Know. Yeah, I mean it's, <laughs> it's the it's Mark totally C. Insane. Winters diet. Yeah, forget you paleo. Know, just drink Diet Coke and peanut exactly. M and M's. The problem with drinking that much Diet Coke, though, is you can't stop or you'll have the headache of all headaches. Really? Oh, the caffeine withdrawals are brutal from that. Wow. So what about mentors? Yeah. Who have been some of your mentors and some great advice? So uh, early on, uh, you know, when I was in the Procter & Gamble Army, mm-hmm. I had a great, uh, a great mentor uh, that he was a Marine Corps major. He got, he got actually, when he's coming out of college at Wake Forest, he was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers to play football. Yeah. He was drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates to play baseball. And he was drafted by the U.S. Marine Corps to go to Vietnam. And so that's where he went. And wow. uh, he, he, was, uh, he was one of my, my managers at Procter & Gamble. And he just taught me a lot about, about leadership and how to, uh, you know, how to work in a team, uh, how to navigate uh, you know, kind of the different agendas that other people can have uh, in business. And just, I think, a lot of wisdom uh, when I was really young uh, for, for kind of thinking, thinking further down the road. So, so, so that's, that's one of them. Uh, the, the guy that was my, my partner in the prediction, the rocket scientist, yeah. uh, you know, he was a mentor in a lot of ways. And, you know, a lot of wisdom in, uh, in different things that he, he told me through the years. And, uh, you know, just again on how to, how to deal with people, how to think bigger, uh, you know, and really, and really see the future and look at the, uh, you know, look at the landscape for, for what's next. Um, you know, Gino, uh, he, he's been a fantastic mentor. Uh, you know, Gino, I give, I give a tremendous amount of credit for allowing me to kind of get out of the, you know, kind of that startup 
uh, you know, full on dial turn to 11 all the time mode to, to more of a mode where I, I have way more control over how I spend my time. And, and the percentage of my time that I spend in my unique ability, that LCD that I talked about before, yeah. it's an extremely high percentage. And I don't, you know, except for a rare interview that, uh, you know, that I may do at sort of an odd hour. I mean, you know, nights and weekends, I'm with family. I yeah. mean, and that's, that's free time. And so I've got way more structure and control over my time yeah. than I've ever had before. And I give him a lot of credit for that. So what's Gino's score assessment? You know, I don't know. Uh, I mean, if you you probably know, like as far as just uh, qualitatively. Yeah. So here's here's what I would tell you is yeah. I think I think he's one of those rare both. Oh really? Yep. And uh, you know I think he's I think he is uh, pretty high on both of the indexes, and uh, in in my my working relationship with him, I can see that his integrator uh, score is is definitely going to be higher than mine. Um, but you know, the visionary conversations, the conversations that he and I get to have like that are, they're extremely fun. And, uh, we both get a lot of energy out of that. Uh, so in fact, we were in, actually we were in your town last week Oh yeah, and, okay. got, yeah, and got to spend a little time, uh, uh you know, one night uh, kind of playing, playing future and, and thinking out on the horizon. And, uh, I mean, it was just, it was just fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. So I have one last question, Mark. Thank you so much for your time on this. This is very valuable. Um, before I ask it, where can we point people towards? I know you mentioned rocketfuelnow.com. Um, they can check it on Amazon, Rocket Fuel, and Audible. Anywhere else that we should point people towards to check out? Yeah, I mean, so for the book, it's available everywhere. Yeah. Uh, you know, and check out the the Audible edition for sure. Uh, you know, the if you want to track any information down on Rocket Fuel, rocketfuelnow.com is the place. Uh, the there's a Rocket Fuel channel on YouTube. Uh, you're going to be able to get to that yeah. through the website. There's you a lot of good, find, like three minute videos that you yeah, do. Yeah. I, I try to put out a, yeah. a three minute video every week that basically is, uh, it's triggered by questions we're getting from the community. So we have a, a private group. So folks that, uh, that, that own the book that want to talk to each other, there's really interesting conversations going on in that private group. We actually have people, uh, posting. This is interesting, Jeremy. So they're, they're starting to match up, right? So yeah. we'll have integrators that come in there and they sort of raise their hand and say, hey, I'm an integrator looking for a visionary. We have visionaries going, Hey, I'm a visionary looking for an integrator. And we are actually having matches made inside hmm. that community, which is fascinating to me. What are they looking uh, for just to like start a company? What? Yeah. So, yeah. so it, literally it's a, it's a visionary that has a company, has a business. They've read the book. They're like, gee, I want an integrator. So yeah. they, they just use that group as a channel because there's all kinds of integrators in there yeah. uh, and visionaries in there. They just use that as another part of their connection process to try yeah. and put the word out and, and, and see if they can find somebody there that's going to be yeah. their match. Yeah. So there's two things to end on, Mark. One, um, I need to hear the future, what you see, what you're up to, what, you know, if I can be a fly on the wall in you and Gino's conversation. But uh, the second thing is the... Um, I want you to talk about first is the influence. Your dad has a really interesting story and inf influence on you. Can you talk a little about what he did and uh, his influence? Yeah. So uh, my father was a uh, physician, family doctor. I, you know, I, I tell people if they're old enough to have ever watched Marcus Welby, that was dad. Right. And, uh, you know, he, he had these wonderful relationships with his patients. He took care of multiple generations in a, in a single family. So, yeah. you know, he would, he would deliver the kids and then he would end up delivering their kids and maybe even wow. that next generation's That's kids. Wild. Yeah. He's delivered probably thousands of, of babies over the course of his career. Uh, and, and what was funny, he, the people would, after they were delivered, uh, they'd bring pictures to me. He used to have these massive, frames, just all these pictures of all these kids that he had delivered before there was digital photography right? or, or, you know, I mean, so there's all, all literally prints anyway. You know, he, he had that, uh, he's a caregiver. And, and so he had this, this deep relationship with his patients and, you know, medicine has changed. Healthcare has changed. And so fast forward, uh, to my older brother, who's a physician and the world that he's got to live in is a much more transaction oriented world, right? So he doesn't have those, those kinds of long-term relationships. The, the landscape doesn't allow for it. Yeah. And so the pressure in healthcare away from that, it creates this really 
really kind of funky uh, dynamic. And so I look at the healthcare landscape, having grown up with what it used to be like, and then yeah. I look at what it's like today, and I find it extremely frustrating and frustrating as a as a user. So, you know, I'm always looking for opportunities. I think healthcare is a very uh, rich field of opportunity that is totally jacked up yeah. and it's absolutely huge. And so, yeah. you know, we, we work on some things that are trying to uh, sort of level the playing field, if you will. If you think about the major players of the physicians, uh, you know, the, the, the hospitals, the insurance companies, and then the employers that are involved. All four of those parties are, are, are pretty deeply involved in the landscape. And it's really been driven uh, of late by the insurance companies and the big hospitals. Yeah. And so the physicians are getting squashed down. They're totally uh, at the mercy of those other big players. And so you know we're exploring solutions that put them back in right. control of that. They, they touch the majority of the money that flows through the system. If we can put them in a place where they can control that and direct that, not only for the good of the patient right. uh, and the quality of care, but for the good of the overall system, uh, you know, we've got an opportunity yeah. to really change the game there. Yeah. And what, is, what does Mark do? He creates a software company to do that. So we didn't even talk about <laughs> the Revelation MD, which you uh, started to, um, that kind of sol- works to solve this problem. Yeah, so you know, I can't take credit for starting that one on my own. I'm a mm-hmm. co-founder, but there's some so you know really good team that have a really wonderful vision uh, around that opportunity yeah. as well. But yeah, that's that's my personal connection to yeah. that to that whole project. Is uh, you know, I mean, it's it's really yeah. come a long way from where it, where it used to be, and uh, it needs to change. Yeah. So on the future side of things, what's exciting to you? What what can you tell us about? Uh, what you're working on lately and in the future? So a lot of work around uh, the rocket fuel offering, and, and really, you know, we want to help solve the problems that uh, that the entrepreneurs value most. I I get up in the morning uh, because I care about the entrepreneur, and and I want them to you know experience the freedom that they were after when they started that business in the first place, right? So I, you heard some of these stories about businesses I started and I landed in a totally different place than what I was shooting for. Uh, I didn't get that freedom that I wanted every time, but there are times when I've gotten it, you know, freedom of, of, of money, freedom of time, freedom to work with the folks I enjoy, freedom to make the difference I want to make in the yeah. world. So if we can use that rocket fuel combination to make that happen, I want more of that. So the book is helping people learn about uh, you know, the possibility there, we're looking at solutions that help them get together, help them get paired up, help them get matched with their uh, integrator or visionary counterpart, as the case may be, and make that relationship great. So we've got some, uh, you know, some training offerings that we're working on. We want to help basically create great integrators that can work with these visionaries and help make these companies go. And so that's really the next thing. The next thing is, is the set of tools, the set of programs that an integrator can go through that will prepare them and then help us match them up to make more of these businesses winners. Yeah. Mark, I'm going to be the first one to thank you so much. Everyone should check out rocketfuelnow.com. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Love it, Jeremy. Thank you, man. Good, good to talk to you. Yeah. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach if you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand